because we've been married. Darling, it all happened so suddenly. I couldn't help thinking about Papa. Papa, forget about Papa, will you? Didn't the minister say forsaking all others, cleave unto him? Well, that's me. But, r darling, run away and eloping with a reporter. Now, what's the matter with reporters? <laughs> Coming to New York. I'll never forget when Papa said... Hey, Alice, you love me, don't you? Yes. And I love you. I hope so. Well, that's all that matters. In a way, I don't blame your old man, I mean, Papa, for being down on reporters. Well, you must have thought we were all crazy. Well, you were different. Well, that was a murder, big story. There we were, a whole gang of reporters from New York and Boston, suddenly dumped in a little small town in Vermont. A small town? I'm sorry. Anyway, here we were. Nobody knew us, nobody liked us, but we had to get the story. It was dog eat dog. Even so. I met you, didn't I? The minute I saw you, I said, boy, I'm hooked. <laughs> oh, gee, honey. It's going to be great. It isn't going to be so bad being a reporter's wife. We don't jump around like that all the time. You know, most of the time it's just routine stuff. Get up in the morning, go to the office, grind out the stuff, then home for the little wife. Nice dinner, good book, maybe a show. Sometimes we get passes, you know. <laughs> it sounds wonderful. Yeah, you're going to like my gang, too. I mean, the boys at the Globe and their wives. Real folks. Oh, wait till you meet Gordon McEwen. That's my editor, the boss. Oh, he's crazy about me. The salt of the earth. I can do anything. He'd do anything in the world for me. Oh, Wally. <laughs> Honey, good old New York. We'll be landing in a few minutes. Oh, Wally! Who is it you wanted to see? I want to see Mr. McEwen, the city editor. All right, did you get the story? Well, then what are you calling me up for? No, no, hustle around and get that. We want it for the next edition. Hurry now, get it in here. Is this true? Madam, if it's in the Globe, you can stake your life on it. He can't do this to me. Where is he, the double-crosser? Well, now, just a minute, madam. That description fits almost everyone I know. Who are we talking about? Wally Williams, that's who. Look, it says here that he's married, that he's a loaf with some corn-fed little hick. Oh, I see. Then you must be, uh... Francis, isn't it? That's right. Francis Harris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. Wally can't do this to me. He can't trifle with my affection. And he can't toss me aside for some little farmer girl. Now, just a minute. Sit down, madam. Don't madam me. You know my name. Well, now, just what is your claim on Wally Williams? Are you his wife? Certainly not. Were you ever engaged? Did he ever ask you to marry him? No, but I like him a lot. Well, Wally's married, so what are you wasting my time for? Well, I thought... Well, you better think again, young woman. What do you mean? Nothing. Not if you're smart. You see, the cops are very funny in this state. They don't like little girls who try to blackmail. Wait a minute, mister. You've got me all wrong. Huh? I'm not trying to blackmail anybody. Oh. Well, that's different. Where are you from, Francis? Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I'll do. Now, you sign this release, I'll give you an order on the cashier for a little money. That'll take you back home in style and give you a little extra for a new hat. Uh, now, what do you say? Now, remember, you and Wally are through. Do you understand? I understand, but I don't know why you're doing this. You don't have to. I do. All right, goodbye. Mr. Williams, there's your honeymoon cottage. Wow, isn't it too expensive? Ah, uh, not a bit of it. Of course, we can't afford to live here all the time. I did the owner a favor a little while back when he got in a jam and kept his name out of the paper. <laughs> so 
though. He's given us the penthouse for a month, free, rent free. Oh, Wally, a penthouse for nothing? Yeah, he couldn't rent it anyway. Too expensive. <gasps> Wally! Oh! Well, they can't. I'll be right back. <gasps> Hey, what are you doing? Williams of the Globe. All right, come on, break it up. Got a form of paper, honey. Out of the way, pal. This is the Look, look what you're doing. And Mrs. Gilder was talking to her husband in Pittsburgh. Quiet, please. Quiet, will you? Take care of that. Hello? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll try and get them back for you. See? <laughs> but that's Mrs. Smith. It's very important. I can't help that. Oh, uh, hello. This, this is Williams. Give me the desk, will you? Uh, hello? Hello, Mag. Yeah, Williams. Yeah, yeah, listen, I... Yeah, I know. I just got back this morning. Harry, take Wally Williams in 14. Copy. Tommy, Tommy boy. Hello, Harry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just got back a little while ago. Where do you see her? The nicest little wife a man ever had. Uh, never mind that. Look, George Henderson's dead. That's right, Henderson. Head of the Guard America Committee. You'll find plenty of clips of him in the morgue. Oh, he was killed about 10 minutes ago. He fell from the top story of the Brockland building. What? Oh, I don't know yet whether he was pushed or just fell. That's enough for the first edition. Tell Williams to come into the office and do the follow-up himself. Wally, I've got enough for the first edition. Uh, Max says you're to come into the office and do the follow-up yourself. You're crazy. I'm not due back to work until Thursday. I just got married this morning. Listen, you tell that big icicle. You want me to tell him that? Now listen, there's enough folks out of work now. Tell him yourself. Now hold on a minute. Wally wants to talk to you. Yeah? Hey, Mac, where do you get that stuff that I gotta get back to the office right away? Don't you realize I just got married this morning? I'm not due back to work until Thursday? You're due back right now, and make it fast, too. That's what you think. I'm not coming back for two more days, so you better get yourself another boy to do that story. Oh, by the way, Williams, there's someone here to see you. Someone that's very anxious to meet your wife. Frances is her name. Frances Harris. Uh-oh. Hey, Meg, you wouldn't do that, not to me. Oh, wouldn't I? Oh, Meg, please, be a pal. The Preston Arms, isn't it? Will I give the little lady your address, or would you prefer to come down here and talk to her? Okay, Meg, I'll be right in. Thanks, pal. And let me tell you something, young man. No one can come in here and make a phone. Forget it. It was an emergency call. You heard it, didn't you? Listen, honey, you run along upstairs. I've got to go down to the office for a little while, you know. Take care of the story. See that they get it right. But you but said... honey, I'll be right back. You show this lady at the penthouse. Penthouse? You heard me. We're moving in. Williams is the name. Oh, yes. Mr. Williams. Why, of course. See, Bye, honey. Take it easy. Be right back. Mrs. Williams, this way, please. Will that be all, Mrs. Williams? Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Well, where is she? Who? Oh, you know who. 
Oh, you mean Francis. Wally, my boy, I've done you a great favor. Yeah. By using my well-known manly charms, I managed to soothe Miss Harris's ruffled feelings. You mean she's okay? She isn't going to cause any trouble? Not for the moment. Now, you have nothing to worry about. Just go over there and write your story, and we haven't much time. We're almost on the deadline. McKeown, I think this is all a gag, and you pull it just to get me in here. I don't think you talk to Francis at all. What are you going to do? Well, perhaps you'd prefer to have Miss Harris talk to you directly. Okay, you win. Oh, boy. But I still think it's blackmail. Why, Wally? Ooh. Listen, Mac, Henderson had this in his hand when I found him. Well, what does it mean? You got me. I thought maybe you want one of the boys to check on it. Might give you a new lead for tomorrow. Okay, you check more. on it. Me? Hey, listen, I'm not due back until Thursday. Two more whole days yet. I know, it's your story. Now you follow it through. Oh, but Mac, listen, I just got married this morning, remember? Yeah, I know. Francis called it to my attention. Oh, Mac, please be reasonable, will you? Now, wait a minute. This is no ordinary suicide, Williams. Men like George Henderson don't just jump out of windows. There's something fishy about this whole business, and I want what it is. Now, that ad may be the answer, so you go to it. You can take your time off later. Oh. All right, all right. Lovely. Well, I simply can't describe it. It's so beautiful, you'll just have to see it yourself. Look, honey, this yarn's gonna take a little longer than I expected. Yeah, 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 I finished the story, but Mac wants me to figure out a couple more angles. Yeah, it'll only take a little while, honey. Look, do get yourself all dolled up, and I'll take you out to dinner and show you the town. All right. About seven. I'll be waiting. Goodbye, darling. Oh, it started already, huh? What started already? The alibis of the wife. You'll be home to dinner. So how long do you think she'll fall for that one? Yeah, but you don't know my wife. <laughs> Hi, Davy. I'm going to make you famous. Why, if it isn't Mr. Williams, our great lover. <laughs> Here you got married while you're out of town. That's right. Chin up, Evelyn. I know your heart's broken, but we can't all win. And to an innocent little country girl. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Let's be big about it. Let's not be catty. Never mind that. What about this famous stuff? Oh, that? Um, baby, I'm going to make you a heroine. I'm doing a feature story about the people who use our personal columns. You know, mothers trying to find their long lost sons, gangsters taking on the lamb, sending messages and codes to their friends, sweethearts trying to get together again. They all come to you, don't you see? That makes you little Miss Fixit. Oh, I can see the headlines now. Cupid's messenger girl, a mender of broken hearts. Broken hearts? Gangsters, you mean. Most of our personal ads are phony psychics, broken down fortune tellers, not a story in a carload. Oh, you just leave that to me. I'll be the judge of that. The trouble with you is you haven't got a romantic soul. <laughs> You're just interested in how much is the ad going to cost? How about it? How about what? Let me read some of those letters there. The answers people send into the ads. You know perfectly well I can't do that. Every one of those letters comes through the mail. You want me to land in jail? There you go. Same old story. No cooperation. Here I am trying to make you glamorous, and what do we get? Huh? Oh. The brush off. Okay. Forget it, baby. It was a good idea that you threw cold water on him, but forget it. See you later. Come on, Hope. 
tell him make it snappy. Oh, Mrs. Williams? Yes. I'm Angela Brooks. My husband works on the Globe, too. Won't you come in? Thanks. Hey. Neighbor Leslie, another member of the club. How do you do? Club? The widows of the press. <laughs> well, this isn't bad. What did Wally do, rob a bank? Oh, no. The owner sort of letting us use it. A wedding present. How oh, nice. I uh, don't think we'll be able to stay here very long, though. It must be awfully expensive. It is. It's the best in New York. Won't you sit down? Thank, Thank you. you. You see, Angela and I are the welcoming committee. You married a reporter, so we came over to let you join the club. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to us, my dear. What actually happened is that Harry, well, he's my husband, told me Wally was working on a story and that you were a stranger in town. Well, Mabel and I thought we'd come over and see if there was anything we could do for you. I was very thoughtful of you. I was getting rather lonesome. I've never been in New York City before. It's so big. Wally will show you around. Yeah, if he's ever home. Of course he'll be home. You'll find, dear, that reporters do keep some irregular hours, but then that's part of their job. You'll soon get used to it. Irregular? So those boys have a genius for being someplace else when you want them. You might just well make up your mind to it. A reporter's wife sees very little of her husband. I'm beginning to find that out. Yeah, well, there's his compensations. There are always free theater tickets and places like this. You see, there are always those big people who want to keep their names out of the papers, and the social climbers who want to get their names into the papers. They figure that if they're nice to a reporter or his wife, why, they're all set. The chumps. Anybody here? Hey, wake up. Holy cats. Ryan 4, 7, 900. Globe, give me the desk, quick. Oh, Mac, Wally Williams. Uh huh? Boy, is this my day. I just found another dead man. What? No, I don't know yet. I just found him. I get this. I'm at the Bond Hotel, room 303. Send a photographer down here on the double, have him come right up to the room. Swell. Wally's taking me out to dinner tonight. I hope his plans aren't too fancy. Because this all happened so suddenly, I don't have much to wear. I wouldn't worry about that. Well, you've got to worry about us whether he takes you out at all. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, how do you do? Oh. They told me I'd find you here. Alice, this is Thelma Tate. Her husband works on the examiner. So you're Wally Williams' wife. That's right. We were married this morning. Well, maybe it's just as well. Perhaps he won't be keeping my Eddie out until all hours of the night now. It's up to you to see that he doesn't. Thelma, please. Oh, you must be mistaken. Mistaken, am I? 
The last time they went out, Eddie didn't show up for three days. And I found a lipstick in his pocket. Well, you won't have any trouble on Mr. Williams' account, I promise you. Oh, I suppose you're trying to reform him. Now, Thelma, wait a minute. That apartment of his was certainly a pip. No wonder he didn't take you there. Don't fool yourself, young woman. Men like that don't reform overnight. Thelma, please be still. Oh, you too. You make me laugh, pretending you don't know what's going on. And as for you, my dear, just keep your man away from my Eddie. The poor thing's in trouble. She's suffering. Well, if you ask me, I think she's crazy. Sit down, honey. Don't give her another thought. You know, she's not really very well. It's become a sort of obsession with her. And poor Eddie. He's always in the doghouse. To avoid trouble with her, whenever he goes out with the boys, he just says he's going out with Wally. Yeah, and Wally, the good egg that he is, just always takes a rap for him. Don't you see? Well, it's better. Who is it? Wally, this is me, Red. Hi, Wally, what's cooking? Mac told me to come on down, but he didn't say what it was all about. Who's your boyfriend? Him? Oh, yes, because I know a good photographer, and I told him about you. Well, thanks, pal. How do you want him? Profile or a full face? Come on, make it snap. It's all right. I know my business. Hold on, Rembrandt. Okay. Are hey, you nearly through? Just one more. Well, hurry up, will you? I got a date for dinner. A date for dinner? I thought you'd just get married. I did, and it's with my wife. Your wife? <laughs> that is news. but we had a dinner date for 7 o'clock. Honest, honey, I didn't forget. For three whole hours, I've been standing here waiting for you. Oh, darling, let me please explain. Look, see this? You that, don't that's realize we haven't even seen each other since we got off the plane oh, this morning. darling, won't you please let me explain. All day long, people have been marching in here telling me what a mistake I made in marrying you. Who, who said that? I'm beginning to think they're right. Oh, darling, you don't mean that. Well, what about our dinner date? I told you I wouldn't forget it. Look. What's that? Cold beer, potato salad, salami, pickles. Oh, all the place is so crowded, I thought we'd have a dinner alone. Just, just us two. Huh? Okay? Okay. Ah, that's my little wife. You come over here now and sit down, and I'll take care of everything. Huh? I'll have dinner ready in a jiffy. Oh, Wally, promise me one thing. Here's the thing, darling. No more murders or suicides. I swear a pack of wolves couldn't scare me out of this house again tonight. Still angry? That's my little baby. Here I go. Now, who can that be? Don't forget your promise. Didn't I tell you? Not even a pack of wolves. All right, all right, here I come. Why, hello, Jim. Hi, Homer. Come on in. Gee, it's nice of you fellas to come down on my wedding night. Come on over and meet the missus. Oh, honey, I want you to meet Lieutenant Thomas and Lieutenant Hall from police headquarters, boys. Meet the little woman. We just got married this morning. 
Congratulations. How, How do you do? Penthouse. Didn't think reporters could afford joints like this. Ah, regular ones don't. You've uh, got to be extra good. Oh. oh, you mean like this? Oh, uh, that? Why, uh, Jim, I can explain that. Yeah, you think you're smart, don't you? Trying to make suckers out of the police. If the homicide squad will go to room 303 Bond Hotel, they'll find the body of a murdered man. Tentatively identified as C. Ron Berger, alias Thomas Berg. Now, ain't that nice? Trying to tell the taxpayers that we don't know anything about a murder till you print it in the papers. But, but Jim, I can explain it. You see, uh, McEwen made, made me write it that way. You bet you'll explain how you found the body, what you were doing there. There's a lot of questions you've got to answer. Oh, well, uh, might as well start from the beginning. You fellas want to sit down? It ain't us you have to explain to. It's the commissioner. He uh, wants to have a long talk with you, Williams. But well, hey, take, take it easy, will you? Look, let, let it go a little more, and I'll come down and talk to the commissioner. You come now. Uh, wait a minute. Well, fellas, I want to say goodbye to my wife. I'll say it. Goodbye, honey. Now, don't worry, Mrs. Williams. Happy. Wally's all right, believe me. But he isn't all right. The police came last night and arrested him. And I haven't heard a word from him since. Yeah, look, for the tenth time, Mrs. Williams, I tell you he wasn't arrested. They merely took him to headquarters for questioning. I don't care what you call it. He hasn't been home all night. Yeah, I know that, Mrs. Williams. Look, we've got a man down at headquarters, and just as soon as your husband gets out, I'll have him call you. Bobby? So, you're a big help. Wally! Those dumb cops. I knew they couldn't do that to us. Us? I'm the one they dragged down to the police station in the middle of the night. I'm the one that spends all night trying to answer their foolish questions. And where were you, I ask you? Where were you? Oh, I know, I know. Home in bed. I know what I tried to call you, and what did I get? Mr. McEwen cannot be disturbed except for an emergency. An emergency. But look at me. What am I? Don't I look like an emergency? Look at me. I know. I'm, I'm sorry, Wally. Sorry. You're sorry. I spend the night in jail, dragged off by the cops, and you're sorry. Uh, Alice. Oh, my poor little wife. I got to call her. Oh, wait a minute, Wally. I've just been talking to Mrs. Williams. She's all right. Oh, you did? Uh-huh. Oh, that's well. I, I better just call her because she might think I'm still in jail. No, Wally. I explained everything to her. She understands perfectly. Oh, you did? Yeah, and she told me to tell you not to worry. Oh, that's well. <laughs> See, swell little wife, Alice. I better call her and just say hello. Now, to wait me. a minute. Now, we haven't any time. You can call her later on. Well, can't a man call his wife up and just say hello? Oh, stop acting like a lovesick Romeo. Here you've got the biggest story of the year right in the palm of your hand, and you want to run out on it. That's just what I want to do. I want to go home. Now, you listen to me, Williams. Now, I did you a favor with Francis. Do you appreciate it? No. Now, I'm going to call her up and tell her I made a mistake. <laughs> you win again, Max. All right. Oh, darling. I'm so glad you could come. I had to talk to someone. Why didn't you call me last night as soon as it happened? I don't know. I was so confused and upset. You see, no one I ever knew was arrested before. <laughs> darling, they haven't really arrested him. The tape will fix it. Do you think so? I'm sure of it. Why, Wally hasn't done anything wrong. Nothing they can hold him for. Look here, young lady. Have you had any coffee? No. Good. Neither have I. I couldn't swallow a thing. Come on, darling. We'll have it together. Come on. Up we go. That's it. Now, the way I figure this out, both these murders had something to do with one another. Somebody had a good reason to get rid of Henderson, or this man, um, Berg, or, uh, Berger. Hi, Marv. I've got nothing to go on yet, just a hunch, but I think it has something to do with Henderson's Guard America Committee. Uh, Wally. What is it? Don't you see I'm busy, Marv? I never did go for this pass of his bunk that Henderson dished out. I always thought it was a phony setup. It's, uh, it's about Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly? What's the matter with Joe Kelly? First thing I've got to do today is to get some more dope on this man, Burger, you know? 
Who he is, what's his racket? It's his, uh, his hospital bill. We're taking up a collection. Collection for Joe? Yes. Well, uh, put me down for five dollars. I don't know how I'll begin, but I'll dig up something. What is it now? It's, uh, it's the five dollars. Huh? What? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> It is uh, 46 cents. I'll give you the rest payday. Feeling better? That's probably Wally. I tell you there's nothing to worry about. Hello? Oh, yes, she is. For you. For me? That's funny. Hello? Yes, dear. It's Harry. Oh, he is? Oh, that's fine. Wally's all right. He's at the city desk talking to Mr. McEwen now. He is. You mean he's out of jail and hasn't even called me? Well, give me that phone. Hello. This is Mrs. Williams. Has Wally been there long? Oh, he has. Thank you very much. No, no, thank you. Don't bother. I'll talk to him myself. Well, what do you think of that? There's only some way to prove the connection between the two deaths. Wally, I've been thinking. I really have given you a rough deal on this story. Huh? Well, I mean about your being married. You know, it isn't right to keep you with your wife like this. Suppose I take you off the yard, turn it over to Jim Leslie. Well, now, wait a minute, Mac. You can't do this to me. Not after all the work I've done on this story. Just like you, to let me to do all the legwork and then turn it over to somebody else to cop the glory at the finish. Well, you've got me wrong, Wally. Why, I only thought you are being married. Don't give me that being married stuff. I'm going home to my wife right now. And I'll clear up those murders, too, and don't think you can try and stop me. Okay, okay. It was only a suggestion. Keep in touch by phone. Hey, what's eating him? Not a thing in the world. I only wanted to find out if married life had changed him. Bride or no bride, he's still a newspaper man. Harry, stop me five until Saturday, will you? One day married and broke already. Wally, you'll never change. Thanks, I've changed. I just kicked in five dollars for Joe's hospital bill. Got to be charitable, you know. Boy, you look like you had a tough night. Boy, I certainly did. Yeah, and I just talked to your bride. She doesn't sound any too chipper either. You talk to her. Yeah, well, Angela's with her. You know, I don't think you're very popular with a little woman this morning. Uh, you must be crazy. Mac talked to her and said she understood perfectly. Well, here I go home now. So long. Well, uh, play it safe, sucker. Throw in your hat first. <laughs> you call a cab, please. I was don't be too hasty, dear. Don't you think you'd better reconsider? Well, if he doesn't care enough to come to me, I'll go to him. Now, I'll tell him a thing or two. May I drop any place? No, thanks, darling. It's not very far. I think I'll walk. Right, now, take it easy and keep the chin up. The globe office, please. Oh, darling. What are you doing here? Oh, I came to see Wally. He hasn't been home all night. The dog. No, he was in jail. You know where I can find him? Well, I can show you. Thanks. What are you doing here? Well, it's payday, isn't it? And you'll soon find out that if you don't collect that pay envelope yourself, you'll never see it. Why, darling! 
Where have you been? Where have I been? Wally Williams, what's the meaning of all this? Oh, wasn't it terrible? Imagine those cops dragged me down to police headquarters like that. Kept me up all night. I haven't had any sleep. Oh, well, I guess there's no rest for the weary. Can't think of sleep now. Gotta get on the job. Why didn't you call me? Huh? I said, why didn't you call me when you got out of jail? Jail, honey. I wasn't in any jail. I was just down talking to the police commissioner. We just sat around and talked for a little while. Uh, I was going to call you the minute I got back to the office. In fact, I had the phone right in my hand, and Max said, why, well, I've just talked to her, and she said everything was all right. I said no such thing. You know perfectly well everything wasn't all right. Police coming in here in my house in the dead of night and dragging off my husband. I was frantic. And McEwen, that editor of yours, told me that I'll have Wally call you the minute that he comes in the office. He did that to me? Yes. Why, the dirty, low-down, double-crossing. Give me that phone. Hello? Oh, yeah, Mac. Listen, Mac, you put me in a fine spot. Yes, with my wife. You said she understood and everything was all right. Well, it isn't. I'm not interested in your domestic squabbles, Williams. Now, you can settle those later. Right now, I want you to get down to headquarters as fast as you can. There's something breaking on the story down there, and I want you to get it. Oh. Well, that's better. Okay, this time, Mac. Well, I guess that straightens him out. He won't do that again. <laughs> I told him a few things. Uh, look, honey. I know. Where are you off to now? Uh, police headquarters. Again? Oh, it's okay this time, honey. What? They've got something hot down there, and I've got to go and get it. Oh. Swell break you're getting, just as we're married. Honey, I couldn't help it if a man falls out of a window. All I did was phone in the story to Mac. Oh, don't feel badly, honey. <laughs> I never expected things to happen like this. Well, Wally, we haven't had a minute to ourselves since we've been married. Oh, I know, dear, I know. Oh, that Mac, it's all his fault. It only hadn't put me on that story in the beginning. Could have just as easily have given it to somebody else. Oh, no. Got to give it to me. No one else can do it with me. Little old Wally Williams. Well, I'm on it, dear. I guess I'll just have to finish it. You understand that, don't you, darling? I guess so. Oh, of course you do. Now, look, honey, don't you worry. I'll run down and knock that story. I'll be back in no time. And I'll call you from police headquarters as soon as I'm finished. Bye. Good morning. Robert, I was expecting you. Have you seen this? Yes, I saw it on the way over. Interesting, isn't it? Yes, this young reporter, uh, uh, Williams, isn't it? Yes. He must be quite an energetic young man. Hey. Uh, hello. Uh, is Mr. Paul there? Mr. Nick Paul. I see. Uh, well, I expect he will be there shortly. Would you take a message for him, please? Uh, this is Mr. Detmar. D-E-T-M-A-R. Uh, would you ask him to come to my office immediately? That's the Detmar Importing Company. Yeah, that's right. Yes, uh, he knows where it is. Thank you. About this Mr. Williams. I had a phone call while you were out from our general headquarters. Yes, what did they have to say? Oh, they are quite disturbed about these stories. Well, I can well understand that. You know, he seems to have an amazing fund of information. Exactly. Too much information. And headquarters is interested in knowing his source. Doesn't it strike you as unusual that the reporter who wrote the story of Henderson's uh, untimely death 
discovers the body of our late friend Berg almost immediately afterwards. Yes. Information on Henderson's body. Something that led him directly to Berg. I think you're right. That's why I phoned Nick Paul. An excellent idea. He might be able to help us. Uh, right now, it is quite important that we know exactly how much our reporter friend knows of our plans. Listen, Morton, I ain't got all day. Where is this fellow, Nick Paul? Ah, oh, keep your shirt on, Sparrow. He'll be here. I never even heard of him. What's he want out of me? I told you he wants to see you. He's got a proposition. You'll find out when he gets here. I'll put you wise to one thing, though. What he is doing is big. He's got some mighty important connections. And there will be plenty in it for you. As soon as this Nick Paul gets here, you beat it and wait outside. When he comes out, tail him. Stick with him and find out where he lives. Okay. Oh, hello, Nick. Well, there they are, waiting for you. I told you he'd get here. Nick, this is Sparrow McGrand. Hi. Nick Paul. Oh, yeah, fingers over there. Hey. Say, you don't need me anymore, do you, boss? No, you can beat it. Okay. I'll be seeing you. I've been hearing a lot about you. Yeah? Give me your bourbon and soda. What do you have? I don't drink. Okay. Well, what's on your mind? I understand you're friendly with the newspaper boys. I mean the reporters. Maybe. Why? I need a little information. Thought you might be able to help me out. You know a fellow by the name of Williams? Wally Williams? Sure. Well, I believe he's got a line on some things, and I want to find out what he knows. Make it worth your while if you can help me. Oh, well, I can try. What's your proposition? Well, here's what I want you to find out for me. Desk. Give me the desk. Hello, Mac. Williams. I'm down to headquarters. Uh, district attorney's moved in on the Henderson case. Right. Listen, Mag, the boys are upstairs getting the handout on it now. Jim Hall gave it to me as I came in the building. Uh, if we hurry, we can beat them on the streets. All right, Mac, I'll wait. Oh, Harry. Uh, look, new angle on the Henderson case. DA's moved in. Seal all the records in Henderson's office and put a cop up there until he can get a court order to go through them. Right. Seems they've been looking into Henderson's guard America movement on the QT for some time. Now, with these two murders, they come out in the open. Mm, now, if I get any new angles, I'll call you back. Oh, uh, Harry, uh, give Jim Hall a break in the story, will you? He gave me the tip. Right. Hi, Wally. Hi, Jim. Hey, you on the day. Take a leg, Duchess. I'm in a hurry. Give me the new right one, will you? Yeah. Robinson gave him the DA angle. So who's covering police for the globe? You or me? Hey, <laughs> Jim, it's up to you. It's all yours. All just gave me the tip. Oh, I was just kidding. Forget it. As long as your office gets it, that's all. Yeah, they're padlocking his office on East 3rd Street. That's right. Police feel there's a connection between Henderson's death and this fellow Bird. No, they haven't established identity yet. They're sending the fingerprints to Washington. Look, yeah. boys, a visit from royalty. The great Scoop Williams, the man who goes around finding dead bodies for the police. Hi, fellas. They call that scavenging, don't they? Ah, uh, the lone wolf himself. Fine pal you turned out to be. Jim, I take it you're me. Ertie says, will you get him? He digs up two murders in one day. And does he declare us in on him? He does not. And we're only Ert. And how about last night? We hang around till dawn, waiting to see the mysterious witness the cops are grilling. And who is it? You. Boys, 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 let me explain. I didn't mean to cross you fellas up on it. Those two murders just fell in my lap. One practically splashed me. After that, things happened so fast, I didn't have time to do anything. And besides, I wasn't supposed to be even working. City News, Vern speaking. Yeah, that's right. You're supposed to be on your honeymoon. Oh, that reminds me, Wally. I understand Thelma was over kicking up a fuss with your wife yesterday, blaming you for keeping me out nights. Forget it. Alice didn't even mention it to me. Say, uh, Mabel tells me your wife's swell. She likes you a lot. Oh, you're making a mistake. It always makes me feel bad seeing another good man gone wrong. Don't you worry about me, fellas. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I didn't even start living until I got married. Listen to him, praising that great institution of marriage. 
And he started his honeymoon in jail. Yeah. <laughs> ah, no kidding, fellas. What kind of a life did I lead before I got married? What did I have, huh? Hotel room, greasy food, button off my shirt. But from now on, I'm going to change all that. Cut it out. You're breaking my heart. No kidding, no kidding, fellas. You're now looking at Big Pipe and Slipper Man. Both live for now. Cozy apartment, a loving wife. Good down, 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 I'll show you fellas what I mean. Go ahead, Miss Fairfax. We're all in. I still say there ought to be a law. Newspaper men should never marry. Hey, who's got a nickel? Oh, all right. One thing you can be sure of, she didn't marry you for your money. Oh, so you guys what it is to have a wife in the home? Gather around. Hello, Alice. Hiya, honey. It's me. That's good technique. Always tell them who's calling. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, that. Look, uh, I'm almost through. That's wonderful. I tell you what I'll do. I'll cook a dinner for just the two of us. Oh, that's great. And I'm on the way home to dinner right now. What are we going to have? Remember when you told me you like corned beef and cabbage? Should I cook some? Corned beef and cabbage? Ooh, boy, am I hungry already. Dear, there's a market down at the corner. You get everything you need. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm on my way home right now. I just got to go to the office and check out. Goodbye, darling. Get it? That's what I mean. Out of my way, pal. Hi, Mabel. Uh, say, listen, honey, I'm uh, finishing up early tonight. How about you and me having dinner at home for a change, huh? Jim Leslie, what trouble have you gotten yourself into now? What have you done? Well, nothing, not a thing. Can a fellow spend an evening at home with his wife uh, without getting into trouble? Uh, say, listen, babe, remember how you used to like corned beef and cabbage? Oh, yes, dear, but it's been so long I've forgotten how to cook it. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but I've got a date tonight. I know, but I expect you home so seldom. Some other time, dear. All right, goodbye. A fine thing. Just when I want corned beef and cabbage, Mabel's playing bridge. Well, what did you expect? Oh, hello. Is that you, dear? Uh, say, I think I can get off early tonight, and I thought maybe we could have dinner together. Uh, you remember when we were first married, that corned beef and cabbage you used to make? Well, I was wondering... What's the matter with you? Are you drunk? Uh, yeah, that'll be fine, dear. Uh -huh. We'll have lots of fun. And don't make the corned beef too fat. See? Yeah. Nice work. Boy, you sure put that over. <laughs> All right, fellas. Say, uh, is this private? Can a mug bust in for a minute? Well, the great McGrand. Ah, king of the numbers, racket himself. What's up, Spell? What'd they bring in for this time? Hey, I ain't here on business. This is a social call. Say, so you covering police now, Wally? I'm out here on business. This is a social call. <laughs> <laughs> Say, that reminds me. I hear you got spliced. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Spell. Say, listen, fellas, uh, this is sort of a complaint. Yeah? Now, no hard feelings, You mind. mean we're done with you? Are you wrong? Now, listen, fellas, you know I ain't too anxious for publicity. It ain't healthy in my business. What you need, Sparrow, is a good press agent. Of course, I know you guys got a job to do, and if something happens, you got to print it. But listen, fellas, after this, give me a break, will you? Now, look, I had myself some nice new pictures taken. Yeah? Why, well, do you know. Now, well, look, you have it. to use my picture. Use one of these, will you? They're more well, flattering. Well, ah, get a load of this. Doesn't that remind you of some great actor? Uh, autograph mine, will you, Sparrow? Oh, uh, the mine oh, so long, fellas. My dinner's cooking. Wait a minute, Wally. Don't go. I got one of these for you, too. Spare, I'm going to try and plant this in a society cup. Oh, thanks, fellas. <laughs> See, I know you'd give me a break. Going uptown, Wally? I'll give you a lift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Right. See you mugs later. So long, Wally. Look at the phone. 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 Now I got a chance to pay it back. Okay, go ahead. It's this story you're working on. You're headed for trouble. The Henderson story? What sort of trouble? I ain't exactly sure, but it's trouble, big trouble. Spill it. What do you know? Well, it's like I told you. Me, I'm mixed up in a good, clean racket. 
But there's some people running around loose in this country that ain't. They're out to get this country into trouble, and that's the mob you're bumping up against. They're tough, plenty tough. Foreigners, mostly, and they won't stop at nothing. How do you know about this? They propositioned me. Wanted me to find out how much you know about their setup. The way they figure it, you're getting too nosy. Wait a minute. Did they send you to scare me off? Certainly not. I don't want any part of them. They're un-American. They're against this country, and they ought to be exposed. Yeah. Me? Uh, I got me a racket, sure. And the cops don't like it, but that ain't nothing against this country. Yeah, yeah, I know. Where do they hang out? On 53rd Street. Spot called the Rose Room. Rose Room, huh? Yeah. Thanks, pal. Oh, it's nothing. Us Americans got to stick together. Say, if there's anything I can do for you, and that goes for my boys, too, just speak up. Say, there is something. See if you can get a line on this uh, Berg or Berger. You know the fellow found in the hotel yesterday? Maybe some of your boys know who he is. Sure, Wally, anything you say. Here's my address. If you dig up anything, let me know. Okay, pal. Thanks. So long. All right, driver. There you are, Mac. That finishes it. Good. You know, Wally, I, I must be slipping. You slipping? Yeah, I can't think of a single job to give you to keep you busy tonight. I guess you win. Well, go along home for yourself and give the missus my regards. Well, I'll see how mine gets over first. You're a great help. Huh? Alice, right, William. Paper? Hey, someday you're going to make a great salesman. How do you figure that, Mr. William? Selling me one of my own papers. I'll have to owe you for this one. Great salesman, huh? All right, over hey, there. Hey, what? Over there, get over. You see what time it is? Oh, now, don't worry, Mrs. Williams. Take it easy. Wally will get here. You'll see. I don't care if he gets here or not. <laughs> you don't mean that. Why does he do these things? He asked me to prepare a nice dinner. I did. And now will you look at it? I can't figure it out. The last thing he told me was that I could find him here at home. Oh, he doesn't even know the meaning of the word. That old newspaper, that's his home. All this is is a place for him to call up and say he's not coming to. Well, you better let me answer that. I'm expecting a call. Hello. Yeah, this is Sparrow. Sparrow McGrann. This is McEwen. Can you come down here right away? Copy. A newsboy told me something about Wally that sounds bad. I've been checking up on it. Don't tell Mrs. Williams, but I think Wally's been kidnapped. I'm leaving right now. Get a hold of that kid and have him there. What was it? Well, oh, it's nothing serious. My sister's kid got lost and they found him. I gotta get down and take him home. Now, don't you worry, Mrs. Williams. Wally will be home. You'll see. I tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we are wasting time, Mr. Williams. You have some information. We mean to get it. Well, you won't get it from me. I don't know anything. We have reason to think you do. Just what did you find out about Henderson's Guard America Committee? Why don't you buy the globe? It's only a nickel. You'll find it all there. Uh, you are being very difficult. You want me to wake him up with Mr. Detmer? I'll make him talk. No, no, not yet. I think I know a better way to get our information. <laughs> Keep your eye on him. Take it easy. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Wally sent me. Where is he? Is he all right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, he wants you to come with me. He's had a little accident. Oh, nothing serious. Just a minute.
Now, look, Tim, take it easy. Now, try and remember, what did this fellow look like? Gee, Mr. McGran, it all happened so quick. Well, wasn't there something, anything? Well, he was about as tall as you are, and very dark. That's all I remember. I didn't even notice what kind of clothes he had on. Well, did you notice, did, did this fellow have a, a scar on his face? Scar? Yeah. Right here. Well, that's better. Here you are, Tim. You've been a big help. Thanks. Gee. Run along now. we got work to do. Thanks a lot, Mr. Well, do you know who he is? Yeah, Nick Paul. You tailed him yesterday. Sure, and I found out where he lives, too. And I told you to stick with him. If you had, this wouldn't have happened. Gee, I thought you told me just to follow him and find out where he lives. How many times have I told you to stop thinking? We're going to pay him a little visit. I'll call the police. No, not that. We ain't got nothing to go on yet. Let me and Fingers handle it alone. I'm just itching to mix it up with that monkey. Well, hurry up and make it fast. Yeah. You have a visitor, Mr. Williams. All right. Come here, Toby. What on earth, Sit still. What do you want to drag on here for? She had nothing to do with it. Now, maybe your memory will improve. Uh, yes, Mr. Williams. Uh, we were hoping, now that you've seen Mrs. Williams is here, that you would be willing to tell us. Dry, what... don't say anything. Don't tell him a thing. He... Whatever it is, don't say a word, and he... I'll be all right. Quiet. Yes, you'll be all right, Mrs. Williams, but only temporarily. Mrs. Williams will remain with us until 2 o'clock. I hope by that time you will have decided it is wise to tell us what we want to know. Yes. It would have been most unfortunate if you didn't. Most unfortunate for you and Mrs. Williams. You will remain here. When Mr. Williams is ready to talk, you know where to find them. Right. Wally! Wally, keep your mouth closed, darling! I'll make it up noise in here! <laughs> Where are they taking her? What are they going to do? They ain't going to do anything to her. Not if you talk. Now, you know we're not fooling. Come on. Get wise to yourself. Say, hey, you sure you know where this bird lives? Why, certainly. I told you I'd take him right to the house. Well, how much further is it? Oh, just a few more blocks. Come on, driver. Step on it. Sit here, Mr. Williams. We're sorry to submit you to this, but it seems necessary. If you give us your word, you'll keep quiet. Your husband is an intelligent man, Mrs. Williams. I feel sure that before long, he will see the wisdom of complying with our wishes. Open the safe. We pack the files. Give me those B-files. May I have my handbag, please? Oh, of course. Make yourself comfortable. Here's your passport. Want this? No. Well, Mrs. Williams? Oh, the air. Open the window, Robert. Come, I take you over there. May I have some water, please? Of course. Here you are. Well, 
that's here. all right. I'll get some more. Well, you sit down here. You feel better now? Oh, you just relax. I'm sure we will hear from your husband very soon. Operator, give me the police, quick. It's an emergency. Hey, you boys. We got a call. Wally Williams is wife in some kind of trouble at the Brockman building. Give him the desk, honey, quick. Yeah? Where? The Brockman building? Sure I know where it is. I'll be right there. Hey, Harry. Something's happened to Wally Williams' wife. Good heavens. What is it? I just got a call. She's in trouble. Where is she? Somewhere in the Brockman building. Now, I'm going to cover this myself. And if anything happens to those kids... Hey, I'm going with you. Me too. You know where I live. Oh. <laughs> you should have thought of that before, pal. All right, where is he? Where's Williams? I don't know what you're talking about. Keep your eye on him. Drop that gun. Spare! You all right, Wally? You hurt? No, no, I'm all right, but they got Alice. Come on, quick. We gotta get out of here. Come on, you. Get in here. Come on, step on it. Come. Oh, there you are. Now it's your turn to talk. Where to take my wife? Come on. I don't know anything. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, maybe we can find some way to make you talk. Fingers, take this man and get a couple of cops and pick up Morton at the Rose Room. Yeah, and tell the cops to hold him to hear from me. Okay. Go on. Hey, look, Fingers, can we make a deal? Yeah, sure. Come on, get going before I let you have it. We found out where you live? Yeah. Detmar's talked. They've laid the whole thing right in your lap. They can't do that. Well, they did. The only way you can square yourself is by turning state's evidence. So you better talk, Nick. I want to know all about those people. Understand? Be smart. Morton and Tuffy will open up down the police station. You know that. Come on, come on. All right. Put the cuffs on. That's the girl. How are you, Mrs. Williams? Did they hurt you? Oh, I'm perfectly all right. But they've got Wally, and I don't know what they'll do to him. Well, now, don't worry. Sparrow McGran has gone for Wally, and he's all right, I'm sure. Just the left arm. You take it easy. Say, who are these fellows? What's this all about? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Just some private quarrel Wally was having with these men. Yeah? <laughs> private quarrel. Looks more like a world war. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. Well, now I can explain everything, boys. Just a minute. All right, explain this. What is it? You tell me. Well, I don't know anything about this. Oh, take it easy, boys. Mac will give you the story as soon as Wally gets here. Won't you, Mac? Huh? Oh, sure, certainly. You know me, boys. Live and let. Wally! Darling. Oh, darling. Oh, darling, you're all right. Angela, take her home, will you, please? Well, no, 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 no. You're not going to go You must go that. home. I'll be all right. Now, look, I'll see you just as soon as I'm finished, darling. Take good care of her, will you, Angela? See you in a few minutes, darling. Nice work, Wally. Come on, you. 
There you are, boys. There's another one for you. What's the dope, Wally? What happened? What'd they do to you? Who are they? What's going on? Come clean, Wally. Give us a break. Lieutenant, this time I'm going to give you the story before you read it in the Globe. Fine. Right. Get back to the office. I'll be there as soon as I can. Nick talked plenty on the way over here. A couple of pretty slick operators. Big shot fifth columnists. When you go through the papers, you'll find complete plans for the sabotage of our defense industries. Ah, don't pay any attention, little fellas. He's trying to throw you off. I'll give you the real story. Well, get back to the office and write your story. They set up Henderson and his Guard America Committee as a front for their work. Henderson got scared. They was afraid he'd talk. He had to get rid of him, so they pushed him out of the window of his own office building. Wally, are you going out of your head? Don't mind him, boys, please. Get back to the globe. But that wasn't enough. Henderson had an accomplice, a fellow named Berg, whose body we found in the hotel. They had to get rid of him, too. Nick here took care of that for him. Well, what about your wife, Wally? Why did they grab her? Don't tell him, Wally. Get back to the Globe. Because I wouldn't talk while they grabbed me first. When I wouldn't tell him, well, they just held Alice, that's all. Well, thanks for the break, Wally. Thanks, thanks Wally. boys. Now, you see, okay. you see, you see? You did a swell job, Wally. Thanks, Lieutenant. But if it wasn't for Sparrow, I wouldn't be here. All right, all right. Get back to the paper. I'll stay here and clean up all the details for you. Get going. Okay, okay. I'm going. Come on, Wally. I'll give you a lift. Good, good. Never mind the traffic lights. Come on, Jim. Get down to the office. Okay, Tell him right. I'll be there as soon as I can. Hurry up. All right, Lieutenant. Now, what are you going to do about this here? You sure pulled me out of a hole tonight, Sparrow. I won't forget it. I told you they was un-American, didn't I? Hey, this isn't the way to the globe. It's a shortcut. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. What's the idea? This is my house. This is where I live. That's right. Get out. But the Globe, my story. The boys told me they'd take care of that for you. Are you going to get out peaceable? Oh, I might have known you weren't on the level. What's the idea of the rough stuff? Get going. Oh, okay. Good evening, Mr. McEwen. Hello there, Tommy. See that swell about Wally Williams, ain't it? It sure is. Wait a minute, how did you know? Is the story on the streets? Well, sure. Daily World, the Mail, the news record, all except the Globe. My story? Scooped! Oh, you wait till I get my hands on that Wally Williams out. I still don't get this, Sparrow. I'm gonna finish this case up right. You're gonna spend one night home. Wally! Darling, I brought your husband home, lady. Good night. Thank you. Oh, honey. It was all so dreadful. I'm so proud of you. Proud of me? Well, you're the one that wrote the note. Why, well, you're responsible for clearing up the whole case. Oh, honey, I'm so proud of you. What's this? Corn, beef, and cabbage. And, and it's, it's cold, cold corn, corn deep and cabbage, cabbage too. Crazy. <laughs> Good. Shouldn't you be at the office? Yeah. Office. Fine talk coming from a girl that was always screaming because I never came home. Well, all that's changed now. Yeah, how come? I joined the club. Club? What club? The <laughs> 